Dennis Paniff Podcast. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the next podcast at uh, Dennis Paniff Podcast. We will be talking same. I uh, will be talking about trucking industry, which still not in the best uh, position as of today. I would say it's probably still at the worst position throughout the whole history of trucking. Uh, we're trying to bring as much informational content here. And my guests are usually uh, and will be the uh, very knowledgeable people from different uh, aspects of our industry. And today I would like you to welcome Nicola Parlich with Maybach International Group. Uh, by the way, welcome to the neighborhood of Elgin. Yeah, thank you. Uh, to thank our you. industrial park. We've been here for only about yes. a year. Yes. But still, uh, we can say uh, welcome to the neighborhood. Thank you. And this is a great way for you to be a host, to welcome yeah. your neighbors. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So guys, today uh, we will be talking about uh, sales. We'll, be talk we'll talk about direct shippers, customers, direct lanes. Uh, one of the most interesting topics in the trucking right now, because a lot of trucking companies are, uh, they work with the brokers, right? In a not everybody's happy with how the brokers are doing the business. And a lot of people think that working directly with the customer makes things easier. And uh, today I would like to find out if that, if that is true, uh, if that brings you more uh, you know, uh, revenue to the company, if that's no. easier, if that's not easier, if that's the right way for the trucking company, yeah. or it's all personal, you know, for different company, it's uh, somebody may you know, better off working with some uh, good broker and keep relationship with him or switching into the direct yeah. uh, customer and direct lanes. But yeah. anyway, um, uh, tell us about a bit, tell us a little bit about your sure. role uh, in the trucking industry, in sales, sure. and a little bit more about yourself. Sure. And kind of going off your, your first question, um, I was, I guess, lucky enough um, or stupid enough, I'm not sure, to, to have first experience working with shippers. I started in this industry directly um, as a broker. Um, I did have a little bit of dispatch experience before that, but that was very small. I was still in school. And uh, very soon after school, I, I, I became a broker and I was also always on a customer selling side. Um, I was always the one trying to find those customers, trying to, you know, figure out what is that, what they need, what is the service we can provide to them and essentially win them over. And then after that, sell the freight to, to, to a carrier. And um, I've been in this business, I believe I'm coming at seven years now. Um, most of my career, um, I was with Uber Freight. Um, I was just very interested in how trucking and logistics tie into technology. I was, you know, always as a kid, I was a little nerd playing video games. So this was kind of like a perfect connection for me to figure out what is the technology in, in logistics doing. And very soon I realized that even though logistics by default, you would think that technology is something that's used at a very high level. And it is more in the supply chain, but it's very important to differentiate between logistics and what we are doing here in trucking and an overall supply chain, right? And then in trucking itself, most of the companies, even today, they're very unknowledgeable on how much technology can help their processes. Now, of course, over the last two years, everybody's been talking about AI and what they can do for you. But kind of going back, you know, Uber Freight, Coyote, Amazon, those are the companies that were kind of like on my radar. I'm like, wow, what they're doing is very cool. I want they're to be a more, part of more them. They're more technological. Correct. Technologically oriented companies. Right? Correct. And they presented themselves as such. They were a tech company first, logistics company second. They started by having engineers, having software people, and then bringing in industry knowledge to essentially guide them through how to build this software is the best way to match the fit for both the shippers, the carriers, and the drivers. And then of course, some other pieces that we have like banks, factoring companies, insurance companies, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so yeah, um, at, at that time, you know, I, I'm, I'm very grateful for the company. They, they taught me a lot. They brought in a lot of good industry knowledge, a lot of, you know, top smartest people that consistently trained us and coached us how to approach this. And of course, they coach us to do it their way. I'm not saying that what I know or what somebody else knows is the good or the right way. This is what I know and how I was taught and I believe in it. And of course, somebody may be listening to this is going to be like, that's not right. I don't, you know, there is old school people that believe more in, I don't know, sending gift baskets or whatever the case is. We were more on like a tech side, like showing our technology and what can that do to the shipper, carrier, and the driver, right? So uh, Uber Freight was your 
first company and gave you no, 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 it was not my first company. I worked for several other companies before that. Again, very grateful for them for giving me an opportunity. Um, one of them in particular, you know, they were very early on in the broker space. So it was basically just three of us figuring out what are we doing. And I remember like it was yesterday, like going on Google, how to find shippers <laughs> and just reading off. And then people, I even found a Facebook group when I posted that and just people making fun of me, giving me like fake links and I would open it. And it was something nobody wants to see, right? So, uh, but it was a great way to learn, you know, because I was so focused on it. I decided this is what I'm going to do. It was not anything I went to school for. I was supposed to be doing so something would probably completely be different. I'm sorry to interrupt. I probably would, would, it had to be my first question. How did you learn to be a salesman in the trucking industry? And the answer is, I just uh, asked Google how to Correct. find the direct shippers, right? One hundred percent, you know. And but uh, you know, all jokes aside, you can find very valuable information there. I mean, the internet is now it's 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 a knowledge book for for everything you want Especially to find. Especially with the Chat GPT right now. Correct. It's crazy. Have you used it? I've used it a lot. I still I, use it to this you know, day. I don't use it a lot, uh, but when I use it, I'm just so impressed how much information it can give you. And uh, sometimes it's uh, even related to the trucking. Uh, I don't know dispatching yeah. or other departments in the trucking yeah. company. I would just say it out of the curiosity, like you know, what will it tell me? It tells you the really good and valuable information. Absolutely, so I think. Absolutely, um, I think you know the um, our generation. Uh, I can already say old old generation, right? Because yeah. we are still like and still we are pulling some old school stuff from yes. how to run the at least me as a to, to yes. run the trucking company. Yeah. We definitely need to catch up on those AI technology, Chat GPT, everything. Because if we don't, a uh, couple more years, maybe I don't know five, let's say, yeah. and. Uh, competition will be even harder correct for those who are not uh, you know matching in a absolutely and i think today with let's just say chat gpt it's free you can go register they're still i believe accepting anybody that tries to register i was like one of the first one waiting in the queue like not being able to log in but if you're not using it today to like let's say take care of the busy work let's say like writing a simple thank you email or like doing like a simple basic response you're wasting time because right. chat GPT is going to do it better than you. And like, obviously both me and you, English is not our first language, right? Right. So chat GPT is going to do it better than both of us combined. And for I, sure. I just want to take a moment. Uh, probably a lot of people who are watching this video are also English is not the first language, but we're all here in the United States. You right. know, we're we speak English. We reply emails in English. And, mm -hmm. uh, one of the one, one time I had to, you know, reply an email and that was about a year ago. When I'm like, okay, let's see what what is this the Chat GPT. Usually, you know, I would write an email, then I will check for spelling, grammar, or yeah. try to use the different words. It takes a lot of time just to uh, look yeah. professional and uh, yeah. send the right email. I tried the G, uh, the uh, Chat GPT once, and from like 20 minutes, it it took me literally 30 seconds. You just explain what do you want to write or put the text. Boom, it's ready. So guys, if you're not using chat GPT yet, it's really helpful. Don't use it for everything because no. uh, you will not become very uh, educated if you don't learn yourself. But still, whatever you do, you can just uh, double check yourself and make yourself look more professional in anything. Emails, notes. Uh, maybe even some preparing for the meetings, uh, preparing even for podcast. For sure. Yeah. Next time I'll be preparing for podcast, I'll ask ChatGPT what questions yeah. to ask. And, and to be honest with you, as I told you, this is my first podcast. So what did I do when you invited me? I went on Google and be like, how to prepare for a podcast. And of course, there was a podcast about how to prepare for a podcast. So <laughs> I listened to that, of course. And and one thing about ChatGPT and, and, and asking it to write things for you, I think it's, it's, it's very good, but you have to be careful because you need to ask the right things. So you can be like, hey, write me this email. This is what I'm trying to say. And this is the tone I'm trying to say it in. Give it another try. You can always say like, try again, try again, try again. And then once you think you have what, you, what you're looking for, copy it and then give it a little twist, like give it your tone so it, it doesn't look robotic, you know? Yeah. Coming back to the trucking, yeah. I don't think it's still gonna give you the contact of some good shipper right? or <laughs> where, no. help me to find the load yeah. from Washington or yes. Oregon back to Chicago because there's 
loads are paying dollar fifty a that's mile. That's a good. That's a good <laughs> business idea. There you go. Let's, you let's make try. A software I don't know, if, guys. Are you using the Chat GPT uh, to find the loads? Let me know. Comment down below, please. That would be a great, great yeah. software. Um, but anyway, yeah. Um, and and back then, when I was trying to find everything. Um, I, I did start just using Google. I think that's very easy when you go on Google Maps and you just type warehouse, distribution center, whatever the case is. And most of them do have kind of like a headquarter number. But the problem is when you call them, you're not speaking to the POC or the decision maker. You're just talking to a person that's a receptionist or somebody else at the actual warehouse. But, you know, if you're lucky enough and skilled for enough, they will give you a right information who to call. And um, I remember, you know, my basic sales pitch was like, whenever you need a truck, I got you. Um, just like everybody else. And then I remember it sounds like a, almost like a movie story that people like to talk about how they started. I was going home. It was like 5.30. I got a call and I recognized who was calling. And the shipper said, hey, you said I can call you whenever I need a truck. I need it right now. My carrier didn't come. I made a U-turn, went back, found a truck, and that was my first shipper. And that's when you're like, okay, I can do this. Uh, let me take this to another level. And that's where I got more interested into other companies, other brokers, and, and that technology piece, because um, that was uh, something that was missing in the company at the time, not to talk bad about them. It just like it was, you know, they were just very early in their stage as, as being a brokerage. And so in between the school uh, or college yeah. and actual work, you didn't have any training, right? So everything, uh, all the experience you got throughout just already yeah. working in the industry. Yeah. So um, it, it's, a, it's a little bit of a mix of both. Um, so when I was in school, um, I did go a little bit into a business school. So they did teach a lot of us about sales. They taught us about, you know, management. They taught us about communication. I mean, you know, just writing a simple email, I think that's a, that's a skill for itself because you need to come out the right way and send the message and portray the message you're trying to say without sounding wrong or bad or whatever. Um, and then uh, I was coming to Chicago a lot and, you know, my, I'm Serbian. There is a lot of Serbians in this industry. So you go to any local restaurant, any local cafe when there are Serbian people, you learn you learn about trucking, you know, even right. now. Talking to anybody. Anybody, right? correct. Probably eight out of 10 people in Chicago, if you're a Serbian, you're yes. somehow connected with trucking. Yes, yes. And I think that's good. You know, like, I, I don't think that's bad. I, I think that... Um, same same with, you know, everybody else. I'm Ukrainian. Correct. I would say nine out of 10 people are connected to trucking somehow. And And... And I'll get back to that point too, but I do have some feelings about how we're portrayed in this industry. I think that um, yeah. unfortunately right now with a lot of scams going on, there's always like, that's the, they're pointing a finger at us, you know, and, and they come like, hey, like we're doing a lot of heavy lifting here. Yeah, we're some, doing a lot of good some things. Some people are making bad names for Yes, us. I know, yeah. but there is a lot of also other, um, you know, parts of the world, yeah. they're making, making bad names for themselves. And I don't see as much as, you know, pointing fingers at, in that direction, but whatever. Um, and then the funniest thing happened when I went back to Serbia for one summer break, I was in a cafe and I saw people dispatching trucks in a cafe <laughs> in Serbia. So I was like, okay, this is it. I need to, I need to so get So the guy this. literally talking to the driver or the yes, broker. Yes, yes, yes. Calling about the tension. Meanwhile, they're in Serbia in a cafe. <laughs> So, that's, that's probably looking really interesting when you're yes. looking at it from the, from yes. the side. Yes, so it was cool. You know, uh, I, I think that this industry is great. I think it's very uh, interesting. Uh, we're never bored, that's that's for sure, uh, especially now when things are becoming very tough and, and, and very um, interesting and challenging for everybody. So everybody's coming up with new ways to, to overcome this. Um, so yeah, uh, I did not have any... Um, like coaching on it. I just had some basic knowledge on it. Like I knew what the drivers are doing. I know what the carriers are doing. I know what the brokers are doing. But that was even back then. I have to tell this story. Um, when I was getting into it, this is like back in, I'd say 2012, when I first learned about trucking. And um, my cousin, he was a driver at the time. Uh, and he was telling me about there's a carrier and a broker. I'm like, okay, like, how do you become a broker? He's like, oh, you got to get this license. You have to go to school. You got to pass. Like it was essentially like a broker for, let's say, stocks and bonds. That mm -hmm. was the the knowledge our community had back then. Like it's something really big. You need exactly. to go to Harvard to get exactly. the exactly. Exactly. And I was brokerage like, uh, authority. But I'm thankful for him for saying that because I was like, I want to do that. Like I want to do that. And then I found out I have to do all of that stuff. Um, but yeah, that that's how it started. Um, and then, yeah, I was, um, I, I, I'm sure there are a lot of, um, brokers of my background now, but at the time I was like one of the few 
in in Chicago area that I know of. Like nobody to get offended. I'm sure there was a lot of them, but uh, in my circles, I I was like one of the few ones that that did this side of the logistics. Um, so yeah, it was it was great. You know that they motivated me to keep going. I'm like, okay, I, I'm I'm gonna be the one. You know, I'm gonna be the, Number the best one. one. Correct. At correct. least in Chicago area. Yes, that never happened, but uh, there is still time. You know, <laughs> I'm still young. Yeah. Um, and yeah, now, um, after that, um, you know, now I'm with Maybach, uh, this is, uh, it was a little bit of a switch for me. I had to get used to the fact that now I'm working for the carrier side, that things are much different. You know, you can't just call a shipper in, let's say Washington state and tell them I'll find your truck because you are only limited to the number of trucks that you have. Uh, so that was quite adjusting and comes to like pricing and comes to all these different things. It was a big adjustment for me. Uh, but uh, with that being said, I think it is an easier um, service after that because in selling, you know, you, you get in the door, they give you an opportunity, they give you a load. And after that, things are kind of out of your hand, like things are in the hand of a dispatch and a driver. Right. And then when you're a broker, even though you build all these great relationships. But you're still not really close because you're, you're not working in that company. Correct, correct. And they have their things that are important to them. I have things that are important for me. Um, but now I think it's much easier when you essentially have more control and when the company is on the same page with you and what you're right. trying to achieve when you're trying to service this shipper. So basically as a salesperson, you can do a much better job for your customer when yes. you're actually responsible, not responsible, but have control over the trucks, uh, drivers, dispatchers Correct. in the company that you work Correct. with. Correct, because, because I mean, to start off, there's no lying um, with where is the truck. Right, because like, you know where is the truck. I know where is the truck. <laughs> I can see the same thing that the dispatcher is seeing. There is no lying whether or not the driver will take the load because I can go and talk to the driver myself. I don't do that often, but it's an option for me. Right. right? So it is a much better way, an easier way to service uh, a certain shipper. Um, so, and... Uh, Guys, uh, by the way, uh, this video today, I will highly recommend you to watch and even make some notes because I know that a lot of uh, newer trucking companies, owner operators who will want to eventually become uh, maybe not working in sales, but start working with uh, customers and direct shippers, uh, take some notes because this video today is very uh, educational. And here is the example <laughs> of how to become uh, for today, one of the best, right? Yes, Sales people yes. in no, Chicago. I, I wouldn't, I definitely wouldn't call myself that. Um, there are much, much more, um, let's say veterans in the industry that, that brought in probably a lot more money to the companies that they work for. Um, but I, I'm, I'm comfortable where I'm at right now. You know, I'm, I'm 29. I'm, I'm still, you know, working at this. I, I want to stay in this industry and I will stay in this industry. So 10 years from now, when we have another podcast, uh, maybe I can say that. I hope to say that. Um, yeah. Right. So, uh, again, uh, talking about tracking industries, what are, um, what are some challenges you as a salesperson in the tracking company facing today in the industry? Well, I guess, um, the number one thing today, obviously is the market and the prices. Um, and, and it's, it's very, again, to, to talk about some of the myths in this, in this industry, number one, brokers do not, do not control the market. Um, I think an average Joe in trucking still believes that a broker is the one that controls the market and they can shift the market up or down. Everybody thinks, oh, brokers are now making a lot of money. And I know you had people in your podcast that already talked about it, but yeah, that's I want, interesting because a lot of me, even me before, like way before, yeah. not today, yeah. not for uh, not for a while now. Yeah. I don't think that all of the brokers not controlling the market, but make it making a lot of uh, margin and profit on the loads. But it's interesting. Will be it is going to be interesting to hear from you. Yeah. Uh, how what is the difference? You know, in uh, like how brokers affecting the trucking market for trucking companies. Sure, I mean I'll tell you that the only way a broker can control the market for a certain let's say area or a lane is they if they sign the contract with a certain shippers that's valid through multiple let's say periods of time so for example if let's say i signed a contract with abc shipper um and we have a contract for three years and at the time it was a let's say fair market for the carrier and now that area plummeted now i'm making a lot more margin if let's say i'm a broker today and then I would, of course, be paying less. I'm making big brokers because I'm paying the market rate. Why would I pay more just because I was smart enough to sign a contract three years? I wasn't even smart enough. I risked a lot because essentially this is a little bit of a gambling. Right. And 
you have you have data to guess the market, you have historical data, you have some type of predictions that everybody talk about, you know, like what's the, the, the fuel like, what's the economy like, what's the the supply of the shipper like, what's the demand for the product like, all these different things. And, but and it's a, a gamble. Yeah, and a lot of things comes from your f- personal experience and the feeling that you have, right? Correct. And it's like filling out the market because some correct. people will say, yeah, you just go to the heat map. Yeah, and see you know where the hot market is, but even if it's hot, uh, load might not be paying really good from there. Correct. And it only comes, uh, you know, when I used to dispatch trucks, uh, working uh, on the load board, I would, I would know without even the load board that uh, where where's the hot area. I will feel, I will I will just have a feeling on uh, yeah. what to expect. I mean, the heat map doesn't necessarily show how much the the rate is paying. It just shows what is the the ratio between a loads in the area and trucks in the area. Of course, that should increase the price of, right. of that lane, but doesn't always, right? Because sometimes there are loads on the board that shippers are comfortable enough or brokers of them waiting. It's not a hot load. Hot load. They can wait two, three, four days for it to ship. They can sit in a warehouse. They'll wait for the best truck for the lowest price. So yeah, no. And then also I, I have to say this, and I know you spoke about this too, people that are predicting the market. First of all, if you can predict the market, you can predict the economy mm-hmm. and you will be a billionaire, right? right? So you can do much more things so than just- not predicting, it's guessing. It's right? 100% <laughs> guessing. It's 100% guessing. And of course I've met a lot of you know data scientists that actually they're like, hey, historically this data means this. Is it gonna mean again? We don't know. Right, you just have to guess and give your best guess. And speaking about that, I like to say, um, from talking to shippers last year and talking from shippers this year, what they are telling us is that they are budgeting for shipping and transportation the same amount they did last year for 2024. Mm-hmm. So, so not good news. We right? do not expect anything. I do not expect anything. I think that the the thing that can change is maybe fuel prices can go down. Everybody likes to talk about about this being an election year. Um, and then, you know, uh, pumping the economy. And so, and you know, you just upset it about a lot of people who is watching. That's, I mean, everybody was expecting that you will say, Don't kill the messenger. I was talking to shippers and they are expecting double the size of yes, the shipper. Yes, and yes. It's coming, guys. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, don't kill the messenger. I, I'm just, um, actually, I think that it, it would be a big disservice to say something that I don't think and people to have this uh, hopeful thinking because. Right now, what you can do is you can adjust your business and you can do some of the things that we're going to talk about, right, to to fix your business essentially and maybe be more profitable or less, how would you say, to lose less money. <laughs> I'm right. not sure how to how to go about that. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I don't, I don't, I don't really think. Of course, now somebody in the comment might say, "Yeah, but you know, this one shipper told me they're going to have a bigger demand, more shipping, and so that's one shipper in one area." But we're talking about the global economy, the global U.S. and and especially U.S. economy because that's what what we're thinking about and talking about here. Right. Okay. So talking about direct shippers, uh, yeah. plain and simple for everybody who is watching mm-hmm. and interested, how do you find direct shippers? Sure. Uh, well, I know that most people watching this have uh, their DAT accounts, right? And if you go into DAT, now there is a DAT one, um, go on the bottom. A little there, challenging for everyone, right? I heard. Mm, I don't know. I think that people are just being a little yeah. stubborn, you know, it's not challenging for me at all. I uh, haven't I haven't looked at it yet, so I can I think it's great. It. I yeah. think it works great. Of course, now people right. are like, oh, it fell twice already. Like it broke down. It wasn't up, but... Okay. By the way, guys, what do you think about it? Uh, yeah. See, uh, two different opinions. No, mine is not different. Okay. I only heard one since I'm not using it personally okay. and uh, only my dispatchers are doing yeah. it. See, you're saying it's good and I'm actually happy to hear that. Yeah. Because now when my, my uh, dispatchers will tell me that it's bad, I'm like, uh-uh, no, <laughs> I heard it's good, so you got to work with it. Well, I hope you can share my content information with yeah. the dispatchers cause <laughs> and we're in the neighbor now. Yeah. Sorry to cut, to cut no, you off. Absolutely. So, this is like plain and simple, the easiest way. So of course there's many more, but I know everybody has this account. If you go into tools, I believe, and then there's directory, directory, right? And then over there, they have actual shippers listed and they're under shippers. Who can find them? Of course. So uh, you can find them, uh, hmm. Sort them by areas, by states. Uh, uh, I'm not sure. Just by about name. That. Yeah, I think they're by name. Uh, I, I can't remember that. But again, if even if you don't have this account, you don't have a user login. What well, you can go go on Google Maps. Very easy. 
just type distribution center in whatever area you're looking for. Once you find someone, look on the Google Maps street view, see what type of trucks are posted outside. Is it a drive van? Is it a reefer? Is it a flatbed? Well, if it's flatbeds and you have drive vans, then go to another one, right? And then when you find that one, actually the Google itself will tell you in the bottom, like people also look for or some, like it's like a term in Google and they're just gonna keep feeding you more and more shippers. Like that, yeah. Correct, and another way you can do it, and then thank you for all the drivers watching this. If the driver is happy or unhappy, they would write a comment about the loading time, how fast did they load, how fast did they load. Usually unhappy drivers, right? Sure, yeah. yeah. Then you can actually click on that person's Google account. And if they're a driver, most likely they like to leave more comments than other shippers. So that person could just feed you 10 or 15 or 20 more shippers, some random driver out there leaving comments. Depends on how many people are watching this right now. Uh, thousand, I hope it's thousands of shippers that are getting phone calls right now. Like <laughs> they never, they never experienced such a high yes. uh, call volume. Yes. You know, <laughs> like yes. who are those people? How did yeah. you find out yes. about us? <laughs> and, and and kind of like a disclosure, you will most likely not be speaking to the decision maker. But just because you're not speaking to the decision maker in that moment, that doesn't mean you cannot get to that person. Right, you I, can probably ask for someone responsible correct. for uh, transportation management. Correct, or, yeah, the, usually the titles are director of logistics, transportation manager. Um, write it down, guys, write yes, it down. Yes. Uh, <laughs> right, what is it? Director, director manager? <laughs> director of logistics, transportation director manager. Director of logistics and transportation uh, traffic manager. manager yeah. something like that. But usually if they have titles such as supply chain, those are not the, the same things. You, you you would get lost as soon as they you know you reach out to them. You're like, hey, I, I can help you with transportation. They start using terms like ocean, air, uh, rail, intermodal. We don't do that. I mean, at mm -hmm. least Maybach doesn't do ocean and air, so I'm, 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 I have no business talking to them. And I never was on that side of the business. So while we're talking about this and contacting shippers, uh, let's say if we're going through DAT. Mm -hmm. Uh, most likely, you know, we are the transportation companies who work sure. with the brokers before, maybe with the same shippers. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, uh, can the trucking company call directly to the shipper and, you know, uh, yeah. quote them and work with them if they work with that shipper before through the broker? No, that, that, that would be actually called backdoor solicitation. And that is in your broker carrier agreement saying that you are not allowed to do that and I believe you might get sued or there probably another way they can go after you is they cannot pay you the outstanding loads that you guys have in the balance. Um, so don't do that, <laughs> don't do that. Definitely don't do it um, if, I, and, and that's a great question because I've been asked that before. People ask me, hey, can I just look at the rate con and see where it is and just call them up? Because and be that's like, obvious, right? Yeah, and and pretty just, logical. Hey, uh, I, I made a pickup at you yesterday. If I just work directly, I can save you money because I'm sure you paid them more than your Pay, then the broker paid me, there is that gap in between. We just save ourselves money and work directly. But no, that, that, that would be a horrible thing to do. I do not advise anybody to do this. Even if somebody will do this, what no. usually shipper would reply to it? Because uh, everybody wants to save money. Correct. Uh, well, so shipper can do one or two things. They can be like, thanks for letting me know. Yeah, let's work. That's very ideal and hopeful. I don't think that will happen. Most likely, Shipper will say, well, you're not supposed to be doing this. And they would report you to their broker because they probably have a very good business relation with the broker. And then once broker finds that out, you're out. You know, you, you can't do that. Uh, another thing you need to be very careful and, and, and think about before you do this is that you don't know the big picture of how many loads the shipper has, how often they have this load. Also, just because you are assuming that broker is making more money on that load, that doesn't has to be the case. Maybe it was a last minute load, it was an unscheduled load and, and shippers just overpaying the broker or brokers are paying you because the carrier fell, you know, fell off the load or whatever the case so is. So you're trying to say that it's possible that even if you start working directly with that shipper, the lane might be paying less than you got from the broker from that one load? Uh, well, uh, I think it's a tough question. The lane, I'm not sure, but load by load basis, yes, 100%. Because if let's say you got a load for $2,000, and then you're like, I want to drive this load forever for a full year for 2200. They might say, no, actually, we have a contract for 1900. We, we just paid a little bit more because we had the last minute. Correct. Broker paid yeah. it, not the shipper. Broker paid it a little oh, more. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Rolling, so. slowly rolling into another question. Yes. Uh, spot market. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times we will hear that, oh, today we did this load with this broker for this much money, and next day we're doing it for, I don't know. 
five hundred dollar less, so he's keeping all of the money. How does it work with the broker when uh, rates are going up and down? Doesn't matter if it's a hot market no. or very slow market. Does it happen that broker will uh, pay out of his own pocket if he needs to pay more? or he will actually quote the customer for that extra money? That's, that's a great question. That's a great question. So this is, I mean, these are all like very big, complicated questions, right? Like there is no easy answer to this, but... Everybody here is pretty uh, yes. knowledgeable about tracking and yes. they know exactly what are we talking yes. about. Um, so, I mean, it can go one or two different ways, right? So first thing that can happen is that, you know, especially between... 2020 and 2021, um, everybody was using the term like RFPs are dead because RFP is essentially a request for pricing. Usually it can be quarterly um, or annual terms, right? You need to hold the price for three, six or a full year. And then what happened? The, the, the prices went down and then they skyrocketed, right? Right. And then um, I'm sure that there were a lot of brokers that tried to maintain the original pricing but then at some point they're like, well, th this is running out of business. Not possible. Correct. So then you call up the shipper and they're like, hey, I would like to reprice this. Um, and then shippers are usually willing to do that if they realize that the relationship they have with the, with the broker is, is a good one. And they're servicing the lane really good with the carriers they have in their network. But then if, you know, they, they're just looking for the best price. They're like, no, no, um, we, we are canceling you guys. We're going to shop around more. And then they realize probably that they have to reprice it right. at some point. So yeah, th th these things are very tight, guys. Like we are very much together in this, uh, the carrier, the brokers and, and the shippers. Like shippers are, we're not happy in 2021 and 2022 when they're paying for something $5 a mile. When right, they, they used to pay uh, two, $2. Correct. Now. So now, of course, their CEOs, because you, you also have to think about like a big company, a big shipper, Logistics and transportation is a very small piece of what they're doing. Like they're creating a product, they're selling a product, they're advertising the product, they're doing research and development, they're doing all these different things. And then the last piece is just to transport. I'm not going to say just transport it, but like it's 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 just one of the pieces. So their CEOs and then the higher ups are right now, you know, pushing their logistics managers. Hey, like we need to recoup the money we just lost over the two years in shipping when COVID was a thing. Yes, the supply. And, and demand of our product was very high, but now it's time to, you know, let's let's save some money on the transportation and prepare better. If something like this happens again, we need to have a plan not to be, you know, hit like this again. So everybody's in this together. It's 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 all about who can adjust the best, what brokers can adjust, what carriers can adjust. And that's like one of the things that this modern, I would say modern brokers and carriers are doing. They are stepping away from, you know, uh, contract pricing. They're like, let's work on something called like din dynamic pricing. It's, it's okay. essentially, something new, yeah, right? it's dynamic pricing is essentially like, let's see what's happening in the market every single day. Like I'm looking for the best truck for the cheapest price, depending on the load. So sometimes I need a quick truck. And we're talking about shippers right now, right? Customers. Yeah, shippers, shippers. and brokers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's all tied. Oh, brokers, of course. Brokers yeah. uh, constantly on the market. They, yeah. they know what's going on. And the shippers communicate this with, 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 let's say, me. Like, they're like, hey, like, I need a truck right now. I don't care how much it's paying. I mean, of course they do, but like, you know, just let's say they don't care about how much they're paying. I just need to be delivered on the right time. I, I, need, I cannot have any mistakes. I'll pay more, right? And as a broker, if I say you're a broker, you're like, okay, here comes the money. You know, I'm making the money now. But then they have a lane that let's say, you know, every day at 2 p.m. I need a truck. Why would they overpay that? Because they, you know it in advance. You know when you need a truck. It's about you finding that best truck for the lowest price and something in between, right? So dynamic pricing is essentially doing that. It understands what the demand for this load is, and then it shoots the pricing up or down. And then you as a carrier, you need to follow this and be like, where do I fit in this? Do I need to send my truck here every day? Or I'm better off maybe just waiting and sitting around and waiting for the last minute truck. Got it. Uh, coming back into your position as oh. the as salesman, that, can we say uh, that? Or? I mean, my official title is strategic partnerships manager. Um, that is mostly sales, I would sales. call it. But I do have some other pieces that I'm involved with, for example, like, how do we use the Lazar technology partners to help us, you know, in, in building this relationship with shippers and servicing them better? Or, 
I don't know. Um, a lot right, of other things. Yeah. Anyway, you're now with the uh, brokerage. Now you're with the transportation sure. yeah. company. Yeah. So, uh, all right, you found uh, a contact of a good shipper mm -hmm. or shippers. You yeah. got in touch with them. How easy or how hard is it today to actually get their attention? Because I, if if I'm not mistaken, yeah. uh, you have a huge competition over there. So there's Absolutely. a lot of people trying to get in touch with with those shippers uh, to get a chance to beat on their lanes. Absolutely. And then you're kind of going back to how do you get to the shipper now? Right. There are a lot of softwares out there that you would just put in logistics manager of ABC shipper and it gives you their right. their, their email and their personal cell phone. All right. So, but let's say you got it. Yeah, Same got it. as a uh, hundred, a thousand Correct. other uh, people yes. like you who work for other companies. Yes. yes. So how do you uh, approach this guy or this department, this company. So they actually pay uh, attention to you more than to the others. Yeah. So you need to present yourself as not only the best fit for the shipper, but also as a problem solver, essentially. And the problem can be simple as um, I can send you a truck anytime, anywhere uh, at, at that specific location, because I don't know, I have a facility nearby or my trucks are delivering every single day at the facility next door to you. So I know I have a truck no matter when you call me. Another thing is that you need to present your company as 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 the best deal for them right now. So like, what are you doing different? Like, what are you doing better? So for us as a trucking company, we we, we focus on, on several different things. So we focus on, on, on drop trailer capabilities. That That's a big thing that shippers now want because they would lose a lot of money on detentions and layovers and tone gives them more flexibility correct right. it gives them a lot more flexibility and thank god we, we do have a, a pretty good trailer pool a second thing we we, we talk about always is uh, the transparency between working directly with us and going through a broker so for example as i was saying the, the same way I know where the truck is, is the same way they will know where the truck is. We don't have a problem with sharing the same link of a tracking location that I see with the shipper. So that's where, you know, we're, we're very transparent. We, we, we're not hiding where the truck is. If the truck is late, they'll know it's late the same time I'll know. If the truck breaks down, they'll see that it's stopped the same time I'll know it's stopped. So might be for those reasons, shipper might like to work directly with the trucking companies more, right? Correct. Uh, even maybe paying them, I don't know, the same rate as to the broker Correct. or slightly more. Correct. Just because they know they have that ability of uh, transparency and Correct. knowing exactly what's going on with their load. Correct. And, and, and another piece is that we are, I would call us a medium-sized company, right? So we are treating every shipper as as they're our only one. They're not the only one, but they are very important to us. So when you call in, you can you don't have to say, hey, I'm a shipper number 786 on the load number 785. We know exactly what's going on. You have very much dedicated account managers that know you by name and last name and know every single load what's going on and they know who the driver is on the load so they know what's happening before you even call and that's another thing that we spend a, a lot of training and a lot of time working on our customer service i think customer service is very important and i think a lot of trucking companies take that for granted everybody's like yeah our customer service is impeccable our driver is impeccable our dispatcher is impeccable well you know when you work they, they think so they think so yeah. and i think they're really good brokers and really good shippers kind of give you like a check where you are when they challenge you with things like, hey, like, this is what happened. What are you going to do about it now? I haven't received an update in four hours. Why did it happen? Your tracking is lost. Why did it happen? You didn't send me a BOL for three, four days. Why did that happen? So I think it's a really good thing to work with really good brokers and very demanding brokers and shippers because it actually drives you to become better in this business and push yourself. And I think that's, that's a great thing about the company where I'm at because we really are investing and working on those things. All right. So uh, you got in, uh, you got to the shipper, yeah. uh, you know, you got no. to talk to him. Uh, he likes how you're doing things. Mm -hmm. uh, now you need to place a bid, right? So yeah. he probably gives you yeah. offering, sending you yeah. lanes that he can offer you. Yeah. Now you need to figure out uh, what are the... Uh, money that you need to put it right no, the, the no. race that you are willing Correct. to uh win or yes. uh take those lanes yeah. how do you come up with the rate knowing that it's not only you who has the opportunity to bid on those lanes yeah. because you don't want to 
right? You don't want to take it for the cheapest rate because what's the point of pulling the those direct shipper loads? Yeah. But you also don't want it to overbid because somebody somebody else will uh, bid less. Yeah. How do you work out those strategies? Before I answer that, great question, but I want to say more about what you need to tell to the shipper just so they like you. So you, first of all, you you need to do more than just finding out what type of freight they ship, if it's flatbed, drive-in, or reefer. Like You need to know exactly who the shipper is, where are their other facilities, who is the person you're talking to. You know, I had situations where I would Google the person I'm talking to and I would find a podcast and they would talk about literally everything I need to know. Mm -hmm. This is what they're looking for. This is what's important to them. This is what is not important to them, et cetera, et cetera. Because every shipper is, is different and every logistics manager is different. They have different demands. Of course, there are things that are overlapping, like they're looking for the best service for the best money, right? But there are layers to that. So when you are reaching out to somebody, you can't just say, I got trucks, let's move freight. Like you need to know, this is what I know. This is what I don't know. And this is why I think it's a good fit if once we talk about it more, it's, 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 it's what I believe it is, right? So yes, you need to do more research and, and put more you know, time into it. And of course, there is some quantity piece to it. You're not gonna land on your first phone call, on your first email, you're not gonna land a shipper. I mean, if you do, maybe you should play lottery, right? Right. But um, it, it, it's, it's a numbers game, of course. I, I like the story you told me uh, before when we met mm -hmm. uh, about your trip to, I believe, Las Vegas, right? Yeah. The manif yeah. manifest yes, you went yes, to, yes. and uh, you were talking to one of the... Uh, one of the shippers, uh, I don't remember, I mean, I do remember the company, not sure if I can say it. Yeah, uh, probably not, you should, yeah, let's not talk about that, but was yeah. it the story about the basketball hoop or the, the, the podcast? Uh, no, about your uh, relatives who used to... Ah, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> I mean, I can tell the story, yeah, it was sure. pretty much, you know, as, as when you're going to this... Because, you know, th those kind of stories, that's the true example on what are you talking about by yeah. you know lending the shippers by not just saying hey i got trucks yeah. let's run uh, loads or yeah. something like that this is you got to be a little more creative and Correct. much more creative not just being having a good customer service skills but yes yeah yeah so the story is here you go yeah i mean when you go to this conference they're great you know you you get to meet the the you know, the, the best brains of the industry, uh, if the conference is good, of course, because we just talked about some some conferences that are not that good. Um, and then, of course, there are shippers and brokers there. And if they're of interest to you, you might as well go ahead and talk to them. But that's where you need to kind of like settle back because we're all excited about it. Like we don't get to hang out with them every day. So when I saw one of the shippers that I've researched before, I, I mean, I researched the person that was supposed to be representing the shipper. I saw them wearing a, a vest with the logo of the shipper. And my immediate reaction was like, go up there and talk to them. I have trucks, I have this, I have that. But I kind of cooled back. I waited for him to like hang out. He was talking to somebody else. And then instead of saying that, I was like, hey, like, that vest that you're, you're wearing, one of my relatives used to work for the same company. They have that same vest. So and he was like asking me actually questions. And after 20 minutes, he actually asked me like, so what do you do here? Like, who are you with? And then I'm telling him, oh, I'm actually with the trucking company. Oh, really? Like maybe we should work together. So essentially so he, he offered you that. He pitched yeah. me the company, <laughs> which is, you know, a first for me, I have to say. But yes, you have to be very creative and, and you have to understand that this shippers, no matter where they are, they're in hot demand. They're very popular. So and they are probably not really willing to talk to us, right? I mean, the uh, trucking companies, whoever uh, represent the sales side. Yeah, I mean- Because it's a lot of us who wants yes. them and they know that everybody wants them. So Correct. They kind of, I, I think so, they're trying to avoid us. Of course. And in I, sort of the way, not like a hundred percent, but in uh, yeah. most cases. And that's why you have to be a little bit different. I'm not saying be silly, don't like be offensive, but like be a little bit creative. Like don't come on as a clown, but be a little bit creative. Like catch somebody's attention. Like if you remember one of the things we talked about in LA was about, you know, recording yourself and essentially making a sales pitch and send it right. on LinkedIn. And even though you might look silly, somebody is going to remember you and it might be like, ha that was funny, but maybe we can have but a chat not, about not this. to be like overwhelmed funny of course <laughs> of course of course you know when you're like I, I i would read some of the examples of like what not to put in the subject line like people would be like emergency and then like actually just kidding i want to sell you my trucks or like offer you logistic services like that's not cool like you shouldn't do that nobody's going to read about ah you got me let's talk about it they're just going to put you in spam right and then 
as you said, they're very, very in demand, very popular. I actually had one shipper at the, at the conference, like show me their phone. And they were like on the phone, like refreshing the email as we were talking, emails were coming in. And mm -hmm. they're all, most of them are similar emails, brokers and carriers just, hey, do you need trucks? 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 Oh so yes. yeah. So it's, it's, it's hard to filter out the, 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 actually the good offer and the bad offer from them. And that's why I said that, you know, even though if you're having the be best sales pitch for your company, whether you're a broker or a carrier, of course, you got to work on it nonstop, follow the trends, follow the technology, follow the things you're doing. But once you believe you find the perfect one, you got to play a little bit of a quantity game. You got to keep trying. You got to follow up. You got to remind them that, hey, like I'm very consistent. I really think that I can help you here. I actually had that same shipper tell me that he doesn't even open the email until you follow up five times. So that shows them, hey, like this, this, this person is serious. What do you think is more, um, works more, the email or phone calls? Or it's got to be a combination. Great question. Again, um, it's 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 up to the person and, you're talking yeah, to. Yeah, and I will tell you yeah. exactly why I'm asking uh, mm -hmm. because I'm being uh, reached many times as well. Uh, when somebody is calling me, um, most likely, you know, I will not. It's not the best way to reach out to mm -hmm. me and sell me something, offer mm -hmm. me something compared to the email because in the email, you know, I don't feel kind of pressured. Uh, I have time. I, you know, I, every day, you know, pretty much a few times a day, I'm going yeah. through my emails. I'm checking wh what's uh, what I'm receiving, and if there's some kind of a legit offer for something, anything. I'm not mm -hmm. only talking about business, but uh, anything. And I have time to read it and actually see who sent it, and maybe uh, do a little research, clicking on the uh, LinkedIn uh, yeah. profile or the website, and then you know I might be interested without even talking to the person. Uh, so this Correct. is why I'm asking uh, your opinion if, yeah. uh, I don't know if that's the right way of yeah. uh, accepting more business or... So so again, this is my opinion, right? Um, I believe there is also not, day, not, not the perfect days to do this. I believe Mondays and Fridays are the worst ways to do sales because on Mondays, everybody comes in the office, there's things piled up probably from the week before, or it's a new week, they have to do, you know, something they do on every Monday. So they don't have time to maybe like think about new thing, right? And another thing that you guys need to write now, because uh, I kind of know about it, you know, Mondays yeah. and Fridays, but from my point of view. Okay. Uh, see guys, uh, you, you can learn something too from Nicola. <laughs> <laughs> don't call your shippers or uh, customers. Mondays or Fridays to land a new yeah. business. And what do you, do you think? Like somebody, if I call you Monday to sell you on something, you'll be like, "Don't call me again on Monday." Uh, no, it's just uh, I know that for the same reason. Uh, yeah. Mondays and Fridays, they're like beginning of the week yeah. uh, with something, you know, problems from over the weekend. Or on Friday when the week is over and you're thinking about something else for the weekend. Correct. You know? And we're all humans. Yeah. You have to think about, you know, family, having right. fun, whatever. Yeah. You, I don't know, whatever. So yeah, same is. thing when I'm doing, uh, when I'm scheduling any kind of meetings, mo most of them, uh, most of them, you know, I'm always trying to fit uh, Tuesday through uh, Thursday. And uh, if I know 100% that, you know, I can do it on Monday and Friday, then yes. Yeah. But first option will definitely go in the middle of the week. Yeah. And then um, as far as calls or emails, I believe, you know, I, I usually start with an email. Um, I just want to show you, hey, I'm legit. As you say, you have links. You can look me up. You can see where I work. You can see more information about the company. Like you can see a nice little presentation about us, what we do. And then if you don't respond to me, maybe I'm going to send you a call. And it's it's a much more warmer call. You say, hey, like I sent you the email. I saw that you opened it. And I like to say, I, I know that you opened it because now there is technology that actually tracks. The email? Yes, email, of course. And now, not just the first time. Every time they open that email, I'm notified. Can you see it uh, through when you're using Gmail? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Really? And it's very cheap technology. It. You have to show me yeah, that well, one after. Yeah, I don't want to advertise any companies now, but the, the company that we're using is a really good company. It's actually very cheap. It, I think it comes around like seven bucks a month per user which I mean, for something like that in sales, I think that's a pretty good deal. So sometimes when somebody opens an email, I get on a call right away and I'm like, oh, you know, I'm just giving you a call. I was actually looking at your email. No way. Wow, what a coincidence. <laughs> so not a coincidence at all, but like, you know, you, you need to give yourself a best chance for this. So if that means- Another trick, guys. Yeah. Like, write it down, make yeah. a note. Give yourself the best chance to close down the shipper or maybe get in the door or have them hear you out, right? So then, yeah, I would just email, phone, email, phone, email, phone. And at some point, if somebody tells you, hey, like, stop, not interested, just stop. You know, they're not going to change their mind just because you said, 
maybe one more time I mm -hmm. give you a call. No, like they, they, they heard you out. They've heard everything you have to offer. It's not a good time, but I say stop now because maybe in six, three months, nine months, a year, they might be interested. It might be better timing for the fit between you two. So don't close that door. Just put it away. Okay. There yeah. is thousands can leave and it thousands for... and thousands of other shippers out there that you can go after and not waste time on that one, right? So yeah, that that's my uh, that's my general approach. And then of course, you know, once you get them to talk to you, that's usually there is usually now because it's 2024. It's usually a Zoom call if they're local here to Elgin or in Chicago, maybe in person, but more likely online. And that's where actually where you need to start learning about your company and know how to present in the best way because these calls can be very very complicated they can be very straightforward they can be not straightforward because usually shippers just ask okay tell me what you got like where are your trucks what's going on what what do you do about this what do you do about driver training what do you do about safety what do you do about etc cetera, etc cetera, about your equipment where do you maintain it um, how's your dispatch how's your back office how's your support so you gotta essentially know have this already and of course don't ask questions that you can find online and that's why i love technology because imagine like going onto a call with a shipper and be like so what do you guys ship like that's a red flag like if i'm a shipper i would never work with that company because come you on you should like, know that before why of course of course coming in here yeah and then you know you mentioned pricing and now finally we're coming to that and i'm sorry i'm going a little bit in circles it's i fine. just want yeah, to share it's all interesting yeah so. i want to share more more information um, you know, pricing, pricing, especially now, is, is very, very difficult because, as you just said, um, very often dispatchers and, and drivers and, and company leadership, they would find those more paying loads than a contract loads. Officially, actually, just become coming here, I looked at contract versus spot, and it's pretty much, I believe, about 30 cents officially contract is above spot. But in practice, doesn't necessarily mean that because maybe the lane you're looking at, the contract is actually below the spot or maybe below the spot that you actually got in the last month, two weeks, three weeks, three months, whatever the case is. So it is very, very difficult. Um, now, of course, shippers are pushing for the annual contract. They're like, okay, we, we brought the price down. Now we want to lock it in and have you run this lane for a very long time. But the problem is a lot of times for companies like Maybach, probably your company too, and 99% of your company, this is below our operating cost, right? Especially now. Especially today. now yeah. today, with fuel being what it is, with equipment being what it is, with insurance being what it is. So that, that that's a big problem. But that doesn't mean that it's all bad. You can still find a lane that's a good paying loan, let's say through your favorite broker, and you love running that lane, they're happy with the service, your driver liked the lane, this person liked the lane, but now you need to get back. So that's your best chance to maybe find that shipper that has a backhaul of their lane and you can probably even save them money for you till yesterday probably you were running it, maybe deadheading it or running it below the spot market. Now you can actually get that rate for a long time and make sure you're smooth and operating. There is no deadhead cost. There is no all these other things. And then also you know where your trucks are. If the truck breaks down, you know where it's going to break down. It's not going to randomly break down the air. You call up the shops and hear, hey, like, we're going to have a lot of trucks running in the lane. Let's come up with some type of deal. So once our trucks break down in the air, we can get, you know, first in the door, you can pay attention to our trucks and save us some money and we can bring in more business, right? So there are still a lot of ways to work with shippers and find those good lanes and good relationships. The only thing I'll say about now, it will take more time. It will take more tries and more kind of like searching for their good partnerships. Because again, shippers are still working with a lot of carriers, so you can too, right? But they also, uh, at the same time as with other carriers, you're bidding against the brokers, correct? Uh, not a lot. No. Um, okay, I take that back. Depends on the lane. So usually shippers, I mean, and this is how they explained it to me. So if let's say a lane is a high volume lane, it's pretty regular, there is no you know ups and downs there, they know, hey, five to seven a week. That means, you know, Monday through Friday, one, and maybe Wednesday have two loads or and Thursdays, whatever the case is. So that's a perfect lane for them for a carrier because you know that you can send your trucks, you can count on that you make these round trips or whatever the case is, and that's just circling. But on lanes that are pretty much sporadic and they're like, okay, like I need a truck tomorrow at 12 or if it's a hot order for my customer, 
that's probably this is a, when they let uh, also correct. brokers to yeah buy because that. and and it's a it's a smart decision for them if if for I was them, them yeah. I would do it I would do it too because think about it like what is the odd of a shipper that has let's say 70 facilities calling up on one carrier that has even let's say a lot of trucks like 3000 trucks they can you know show up with a truck in 3 hours in some way pretty difficult so brokers have a, a, a still a big big you know service and 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 there there is a huge need for them still because they can find you that best truck at the best time for the right best now. price yeah. right now right now. correct and yeah, the carriers but, can't do that but the reason why i'm asking is because you know, when you are trying to bid onto the some lanes as mm -hmm. a carrier, yeah. uh, it's probably not a lot of chances that you can win the lane just because if uh, somebody else, like, you know, one of the biggest or just a decent side brokers also bidding on it, yeah. they can uh, put a much, uh, you know, smaller uh, bid on the same lane versus yeah. what the carrier can put. Because operational costs, yeah. sometimes, uh, you know, broker probably... Uh, makes more money on the volume, not uh, you know, not like a carrier that you know. If we have, let's say, break even at uh, let's call it two dollars a mile, mm -hmm. everything you know, two dollars or less, it doesn't even make sense to put the bid right because you don't yeah. want to run the lane for uh, negative profit. But for broker, if it's a somewhere between two and two oh five, if it's a big volume, uh, it, it yeah. works for them. Because yeah. if it's a thousands of loads, uh, you know, it, it works for them. Yeah, yeah, and you're 100% right. And even brokers, you know, like not every load is going to win the money, but they're looking at this on a monthly, quarterly, annual an annual level. So just because I lost money on two loads doesn't mean it's a bad lane, right? You got to look at like what's going on. Maybe those two lanes, I couldn't find a truck. It was a last minute, you know, cancellation, whatever the case is. But for us, for carriers, and, and, and this is where, where it gets very complicated and interesting, you know, different carriers have different approaches when it comes to pricing. So one of the, the approaches is get your foot in the door, you know, like but just show them the service, show them we're actually good, and then we're going to ask for more money. Um, I, I'm not a big supporter of that, of that method because if you're asking a shipper to increase your rate, what is something else that you're going to bring to the table? Like... Did you not show me the service before? Did you not show me the, 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 the support and tracking or all this technology? So now you're asking for more money because you're going to add that to, or you're just asking more money because just now- Just because you're asking more money. You're asking more money. I mean, it, it sounds very silly when you say it this way, because I mean, that same as, I don't know, you start your, let's say you said, um, you know, your, your family is into swimming and your coach is like, I need more money for the lessons. You're like, okay, why? Like what changed? Like, are you paying the pool more? Are you paying the, are you better at your job or whatever the case? So it kind of has to be, you have to be firm from the, correct from the first time. Correct. Because nothing will change. You know, you have to figure out what your cost is. And only if the market changed significantly, like we were talking about correct. 2020 and 2021. Yeah. And that's why I said that different carriers and different brokers have should have completely different pricing on the, most of the lanes. Because yes, we all look at the market. We all look at the spot rates, contract rates, all the different things. And it's very important, right? To, to have an idea like how much is this actually paying to others and, and, and to my competition. But you need to figure out what is your cost? What is something that your drivers want? And this is where we get into more like a driver relations when, when you're in the carrier side. And this was all new to me. When, when, I, when I joined Maybach, because I started understanding that, of course, like drivers need to be happy too, and you need to find them the lanes that they're gonna like. So you need to figure out where their homes are, where your terminals are, where your shops are, all these different things. And once you figure that out, okay, let's, let's go to the drawing board and figure out what are some of the lanes we already have under contract. It can be with the broker too, right? Because a lot of people forget that you can get really good contracts with brokers, um, not just with shippers. And then once you figure out what your, essentially your, your heat map is and where your trucks are and where the lanes are, then you should figure out, okay, if I get this lane for, let's say, $2 a mile, even though the market is paying, let's say, 2-1, I can run it all year long because overall these two lanes combined are at 2.5, whatever the case is. The driver knows how much money they can expect. The shipper knows how much money we're going to cost them. They like the service. And then that's when you show the service. And then they're going to be like, hey, what about this lane? Maybe it's going to work for you too. What about this lane? What about this? What about that? And that's how you grow this relationship. Not just by asking, hey, I need more money now because I need more money. Got um, it. Yeah. Uh, so uh, talking a little bit about uh, being working for a trucking company, mm -hmm. right? Not for the brokerage, but for the trucking company. 
Uh, you guys, by the way, congratulations on moving to Elgin. Thank you. Uh, you have a beautiful building. I don't know. It's a state of the art facility, uh, yeah. huge parking space. Yeah. yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit more. How is it now uh, to represent um, my back? Yeah. Knowing that behind your back, you have, you know, facility, parking, uh, everything that you, you know, you showed me once. Uh, yes. Thank you, by the way, for the tour. Yes, you were one of the first ones to see it, actually. I yeah, believe. so uh, <laughs> I actually promote it a little bit. I know shippers like it, right? Uh, when uh, carriers have their own big facility with sure. people in it, with parking, with storage, with maintenance. Sure. So how, the, how did it affect uh, my book? Yeah. Moving yeah. in from uh, old location into this beautiful place. Yeah, and, and that's, uh, you know, again, very thankful for the company I'm at because of those things. Um, you know, the, the owners, the leadership, they invested. This was a long-term plan. And I think actually it falls right at, at uh, 10 years of, of doing business. So it was a, kind of like a great little thing that happened. Um, and, and just as I said, I think this is what sets us apart. Um, not many companies can have a facility like that. And it's not just a, a monument. It's not just a statue. Like this facility actually can help us a lot in servicing both the shippers, the brokers, and helping our drivers too. So the number one thing it is, um, it has warehouse space. So now we can do cross docking. We can do, you know, long-term, short-term warehousing. We can do all these different things and we can do it in our facility under our control. So, you know, it's safe. Again, same thing for the parking yard. It is our parking yard, parking lot. We have cameras on it. I believe the whole facility has more than 160 cameras, all monitored 24 seven you know, from both people and AI and technology and all the different things. So we know what's going on. And then finally, you know, when, when you have such a big and a nice facility, I think that that sends a message to everybody. Hey, like we're here in the long term. Those now, guys are serious. We are right? serious. Exactly. Especially now, unfortunately, that a lot of carriers are exiting the business. Maybe they were here for like when the, the, the market went up or they were just hit with the market bad yeah. and it couldn't survive. Right. There's different kinds. Yeah. 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 Um, and, and this, I think, sends a strong message. Hey, like we're here for the long term. We're serious. This is just the beginning, and and, and it is. I truly believe in it. That we're going to expand more. Have and you landed any uh, new shippers? Yes, we have. In this period, yes, yes, while yes, of yes, because, yes. And now, now my number one goal is to actually have them come to the facility because you know I always send. At first, I would send just the renders. You know, the three D renders of what it's going to look like, and then it kind of looks fake. It's like, yeah, yeah. Call me when it's ready. Like, cause most people just, you know, come up with stories and then this business, you know how there is a lot of uh, lying or I don't know the lack of a better word, but it's, there is a lot of uh, false information out and, there. Uh, uh, by the way, guys, uh, just so you know what are we talking about, I'm gonna mm -hmm. leave a link down below in the description to this video to LinkedIn account of my sure. back. Uh, I've seen the post, I believe it was uh, a couple Last of days week. ago. Yeah. yeah, about a grand opening and all the pictures. So yeah. you can actually see how the trucking company looks like the yeah. Maybach trucking company. Yeah. I mean, yours is pretty good. Let's be honest. But, not, uh, not, not close to yeah, the size. Yeah. But thank you. Yeah. And then, um, you know, once they come to the facility, they, they see that this is where we maintain our trucks. They can see how we maintain them. They can see the safety procedure. They can actually sit in a, in a, like, let's call it a classroom where we do orientation for the drivers and talk about safety procedures and how we go about business. They can talk to any other department. They can talk to dispatch. They can talk to safety. They can talk to um, probably our CFO. I don't know if he's available. So I think that again, layers another transparency about this is what we said we are. Come see it yourself and you'll see that this is how we operate. And talking about, of course, like even technology and, 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 and everything else, like you can come and see it yourself rather than just talk about it in a presentation. So that's that's my main goal now to, um, you know, if there is any shippers watching this, you might as well come by, we're here. Well, that, that's the goal. It's yeah. not only for uh, trucking companies, yeah. I would say it's for everybody in the industry yeah. because hearing different opinions or maybe, uh, no, opinions of different people about the same issues yeah. could bring a lot of value just because of a different view of a different person uh, like you. I'm pretty sure if, uh, you know, in a, one of the next podcasts, I will be talking uh, with somebody who is in sales, but yeah. in a different company, maybe in the brokerage, we will yeah. hear something same direction, but completely different view that will just uh, change uh, the way of thinking about it. Yeah. And I think that's great. I think that yeah. the people having different opinions and different approaches, and I'm always open to, to, to looking for more. Again, my approach to this is not something I, you know, dreamed about or, or, or 
came up with. Like this is essentially a combination of, of reading about things, listening to other people, um, learning myself, and then kind of like giving it a little bit of like a sprinkle of, of myself on top and like showing my personality and when what I, and of course you got to change that with the company, like different companies should be pitched differently. So yeah. everything I talked about today probably may not work for somebody or may work really well. Like you never know. So you got to understand like what is the good things about your company? What are maybe some of the bad things that you shouldn't talk about? For example, if, if you know the shipper is very sporadic and, and comes up with the loads, you know, in 24 hour notice, probably not the best idea to go after them if you're a carrier, you know, you're just wasting your time. You're going to give it a try. You're going to get excited about it. And then two, three, four times, they're going to send you an offer and be like, Hey, do you have a truck? No. Do you have a truck? No. Do you have a truck? No. The next thing you know, they never talk to you again yeah. because they're wasting their time. Obviously we're all here finding the best load for the best truck or the best truck for the best load, right? Whatever the, the, the side you're on. So yeah, that's, that's overall. And I think it's very good that you bring in more, people it would be great if you brought a shipper i think you can learn a lot from them and what they're hearing and what they are actually like reading in these emails and different pitches maybe they can show you like the worst and the best i think that would be a great thing yeah uh next question would be um how do you balance your customers that you actually landed you keeping mm -hmm. the good relationship with them uh, but you actually not controlling the loads that your company and your drivers drivers of your company are hauling, right? Because mm -hmm. there is a dispatchers, drivers, and uh, you as the person who you know trying to do everything for your customer. And mm -hmm. I get what you're saying. Like you can go above and beyond. You will you know talk to them daily. You will be nice. You will be the rates are good. Everything is great. But there is one uh, interesting thing. Once the load goes into the trailer of the driver and under control of a dispatcher of your company, it changes things a little yeah. bit. Yeah. So what are the challenges between, you know, balancing uh, the providing the service between customer and between a dispatcher and the driver? And you're in between. So you yeah. have to be good for both. Correct. But it's, I believe it's not, not very easy. Yeah, th that's a great question. Um, and it's great because that's something I've, I've ran into very fast um, when when I joined Bain back, and uh, you know our dispatch is great. They're they're really good, and and this is what I measure um, every dispatch on is like when we have a load. Let's say I, I'm like, hey guys, on what is today? Today is Monday. On Wednesday we have a load. Do we have a truck? Yes. Is the truck gonna be there? Of course not. Like keeping aside breaking down and all these different things, like regular things, you know, like is the truck gonna be there? Yes. Are you gonna set it up to be there? Yes. Is it traveling? Is it there on time? Yes. I think that's dispatcher's main job. And then we get into more like a customer service level, how they communicate. And I think this is where um, that's the difference between, and that's where kind of like the company checks itself, like how you communicate with the broker, how you communicate with the shipper. And I think those should not be different, but I think dispatcher also needs to pay attention. For example, like if the truck is not being loaded, you can't send an email and being like, can you call the shipper? You're talking to the shipper, <laughs> You're right? talking about dispatcher sending an email yes. like to a bro a to a shipper, to a shipper. Yeah, yeah, because a lot of times they will be in the same email chain. Without realizing it's actually a shipper. Correct, correct. Who but, will not be very happy of course about not. the <laughs> way of presenting the question. Of course. And I think that's where, um, you know, I, I love talking about customers here because there's so many levels and layers of doing that. And I think a lot of times, you know, the difference, we talked about earlier about how do you, how are you the one that actually wins the shipper and grows the relationship? These are small differences, but they make at the end a, a huge difference. Like how do you talk? How do you solve the problem? How do you communicate when the driver is mad? How do you communicate when the dispatcher is mad? Or how do you ask for more business? Like there, there, there is ways to do this in the right or the wrong way. I mean, of course, somebody might disagree with me, but for example, if let's say the driver is mad and the dispatcher, again, I'm balancing between the shipper and the dispatcher. And the dispatcher. Dispa so you don't have much contact with the driver, correct? Correct. it's going to be too much. Yes. But the dispatcher is balancing between, let's say, me, shipper, and the driver. Because mm -hmm. it's in their interest for driver to keep them happy. It's in my interest to keep me happy. And then, of course, they know they need to keep the shipper happy. So I think that's where the company needs to set rules. You know, how do you behave? How do you talk? 
How do you solve problems? How do you address problems? And then we adjust. And of course, there is going to be times where the shipper is maybe just taking advantage of us being too nice. At some point, you have to say enough is enough. This is not the business that we signed up for. This is not the relationship we talked about. We feel like we've done everything the right way. We feel like when there is a problem, it always goes against us. Can we change this? No. Okay, we part ways. And there is nothing bad about that. I think it's very important that you always adjust to shipper needs and to your needs too. And maybe your your strategy, your goals change and shippers and strategy and goals change too. And they might not be the best fit. So that's why I think it's very important when you are talking to shippers and brokers too, you need to realize what is that they're looking for? What are the metrics they're using to measure your success? And that's why I like technology now because a lot of good brokers and shippers at the end of the month, they just send your report card. And this report card tells you everything about you like on time pickups, on time deliveries, communication. Closing loads on time, delivering loads, sending BOLs, tracking, um, how fast you accept the load or reject the load, how many you accepted or rejected versus how many you said you're going to do it. So at the end of the month, they just give you a result. Have you dropped the trailers on time, et cetera, et cetera. And I think that's a, that's a great metric to show you where you are. Question then. Mm -hmm. Since you've been on the brokerage site and now you are with the trucking company, when you didn't um when your driver was not on uh, was not being trackable right mm -hmm. and uh, at the end of the load broker deducting let's say fifty dollars doesn't sure. matter for uh, non-tracking and uh he tells that well a customer that's the customer uh, rules they're charging a certain amount of money for not tracking does that true or it's uh different with uh, every broker and carrier question. i was waiting for the question so um I was very lucky enough to never be with those brokers. Does it happen in this industry? 100%. And a very good comment that most carriers make is like, why are you bringing in the shipper in this? I made a business deal with you and me, right? Like, right. I don't have anything and, to do yeah, with And I get it when the broker, let's say, saying, okay, on the rate confirmation, we have this, that tracking or charge, right? Yeah. And then you kind of ready for correct, this. Correct, correct. But when it uh, goes for the at the end of the load, when it's finished, and like you just mentioned, yeah. bringing in the shipper into this. Yeah. yeah. Or like, oh, uh, I need to get paid, um, let's say, detention or tone or whatever it is, and then the broker's like, let me check with the shipper. Why are you checking with the shipper? We, have a, we never mentioned yeah. shipper until this time, right? We never mentioned, we never talked about it. So that's a great question, Dennis, and, and, and I'm asking all the carriers, reevaluate the, the people you do business with, brokers and shippers. You need to set very clear terms. And I was lucky enough that every company I worked with, that there are clear terms. So for example, like one of the companies I worked at, we had our terms that did not change no matter what the shipper is. Now, when we go to the shippers, it can do, one of the two things can happen. They can have their own, let's say, tonal fees, detention fees, layover fees, whatever the case is. And then we have ours. And then we sit down, we negotiate about it, depending on the deal that, and the amount of lanes we want or how tough of our negotiators they are. We accept them or reject them or we find some, ourselves in the middle. But we treat the carriers the same because they know that's the standard they expect from us. And I think that's how every single broker should work and every single carrier should demand that from brokers. Now, if they tell you, oh, on this load, it's different because it's a different shipper. If you want to accept that, accept it. But you need to know that in advance. In advance. Because I don't think it's fair at all that this can change, you know, from load to load, from time to time, and usually only when it goes against the carrier. I don't think that's fair at all. So you need to, I think, especially in times like now, you need to reevaluate who you're working with because one big mistake working with a bad broker or shipper now can essentially yeah. run you out of business. Uh, and actually, question uh you don't have to answer it because mm -hmm. it might be related to uh, how your company does you know it, its own strategy but i'll ask anyway um if you will bring let's say uh 10 15 20 shippers right yeah. uh, you have to delegate them and give them to different uh dispatchers right because you cannot control each and single load so we do a little bit different we we, we don't delegate it to to dispatchers we have um essentially account managers that do that or account executives, depending how different people call it. But that person is in charge of talking to the shipper and then dele delegating everything else down to the dispatch. So it's similar, like brokers have uh, 
customer sure. uh, representative and the carrier, and the carrier side. Absolutely, yeah. that's right. a great way to put it. So in, in maybe in dispatch's mind, that account manager is a broker. And right. again, it's probably depends on the size of the trucking company, yes. right? Yes. When you feel you need that kind of person, because yes. you, like again, we spoke before with you about uh, the issue of this communication with your shippers, yeah. because your shippers are like your best friends. You want to yeah. treat them five uh, plus or A plus. Yes. And yes. when you go home, you want to be sure that people who work at your company, they're doing the same thing, yeah. which probably in most well, not in most, but in a lot of cases, would not be the same. <laughs> Correct, and, and and you know this is it's it's a great point you're making right now, Dennis, because as as that was a big adjustment also for me. Like when you are working at, at the brokerage, chances are most of the shippers are a good fit because you are just to them. Hey, like I need carrier network in this area. This is the service I need. This is my expectation. You adjust to it. But when you're working for for a carrier, you have to be really understand what is that the dispatch wants because you don't want to bring him you know shit right sorry for right. cursing i'm not sure yeah. that's allowed on this podcast um but yeah you, you, you don't want to you can do that okay yeah. yeah like you don't want to bring them things that they're just you're forcing down them and they're like hating your freight and maybe like their manager said oh we have to service this because you're, you're just creating bad vibes and then you're creating bad relationship with them because at the end of the day Dispatch, I need them. I need them yes. to help me. And, and they and, need you and, and correct. you need them. Correct. And then this is the only way to make a company grow. And this is the only way that, that you're going to have success. We're on the same team here, right? We have a right. lot of, you talked about competition. We have a lot of competition already. So if we're not on the same team. We are the strategy, competition, actually. Well, I mean, that's fine. We are the competition. <laughs> but yeah. we are friends. Yes. You know, we're yes. neighbors. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, maybe we have a different conversation if we land the same ship, right? <laughs> But yeah, um, so yeah, it's, 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 you know, talk, talk to your dispatch, understand what's going on. Also, you know, I'm, sometimes they're going to think I'm full of it and they're going to, I'm going to think they're full of it, but I think. So talking day. about this, uh, you, him or somebody else, somebody else full of it, uh, <laughs> market, right? Yeah. So your, uh, dispatchers at your company could be your best friends yeah. today, right? Mm -hmm. Because there is no loads, they pain, uh, the, I don't know. Yeah. They pay nothing and there's no loads. So whenever you're bringing uh, shippers, yeah. they're happy. They're probably calling you a few times a day if you have uh, some loads for them. Yeah. What happens when uh, the market goes up, even if for the short period of time, I'm pretty sure you've been uh, yeah. through those periods. And when you have those dispatchers with you who actually... I don't know, everybody is working on the different uh, pay structure model, mm -hmm. but if you're on the commission and you know that on the spot market you can mm -hmm. make, I don't know, twice more, mm -hmm. so why would I take a load from Nikola if I can just go take it from, let's say, TQL, right? Yeah. One of the biggest brokers yeah. and cover all of my trucks and throughout this week I'll just make a uh, double. Yeah. So, but uh, you have commitment with your direct shippers with the customers yeah. and you need actually to cover those lanes with uh company trucks that this dispatcher have how to balance this um you you came with great questions i mean this, this is a great <laughs> question um and these are the conversation we're having right now um first of all when we talk about okay i need to go a little bit back um one of the things that i i that doesn't make me very happy is when the dispatch asked me what are we going to do when the market goes up? And right now, the, 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 the time everybody's talking about is August. I can't wait for August. Like, I can't wait. I, I really hope they're right because, um, I mean, it's for the best for me too. Why, right? why, uh, why August? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> the Olympics are going to be done. Then. I, don't know. <laughs> I have no idea why August. Uh, but um, whatever. Somebody, you know, again, it's, a lot of people have a lot of ideas when this market. I've heard it from especially from like my community back in Serbia, they'll be like, oh, my buddy went to college in the US, that's what he heard. Or uh, a driver talked to the person in a, in a warehouse, they told him it's gonna be good in August. I'm like, okay. Like really, that's, that's who you believe can track and predict the whole world economy because that's what influences us. It's very easy, it's supply and demand and gas, right? right? I think, I mean, of course, there's some a little bit more metrics, but like very easy, how much are people buying products? that's affecting what's the demand for that product and how many trucks are on the road. And now people are talking, and we're diverting a little bit, I just want to talk about it, like people are like, oh, a lot of carriers are going out of business, that means less trucks on the road. 
Well, if somebody is a driver, once the company's out of business, they're not gonna just stop driving. They just find another company. Right. Like you're not gonna be mad if some company, you know, I mean, you're not gonna be happy that the company closed down, but you're gonna be happy that you got some drivers for them, correct? Right. Yeah. So the fact that there is less trucks on the road, of course there is, because a lot of drivers jumped into the industry between 2021 and 2022 when it was paying as much as it was paying. Much more. Uh, yeah, and yeah. now when it's not paying anymore, they left exit. the trucks, exit, they go back to their jobs they were there before. So what is the, what is your answer to your dispatchers when they yes, ask you sorry. what we're going to do in uh, August when the market goes I think By the way, guys, uh, mm -hmm. what do you think on that? August. <laughs> Yeah. August is the time. Yeah, uh, August but is the time. Don't take it. Don't take it very serious. Don't start buying more trucks. Yes, <laughs> or do. I don't know. That's up to you. Um, Honestly, I think it's uh, it will start picking up in June. Going a little bit, you know, we'll, uh, prediction, right? We okay. will talk about it more about prediction. Okay. okay. June, August. June, August. Yeah. We'll no, see. this is not my prediction. My prediction is not. No, not the, not, yeah. not the. Okay, <laughs> yeah. it's your uh, dispatcher's prediction. Yeah, my dispatcher. Who friend from uh, a friend? Said. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> um, but. What's going to happen? I think these are um, questions for the leadership of the company. What is the direction that we go in? Of course, I believe that this can be adjusted. You know, if the prices go up, we sit down with the shippers and go, hey, the prices change. Can we renegotiate this? And a lot of times they know what's going on, especially because with some shippers, you don't have to have a contract rate. We follow the market. You know, it's a constant negotiation. It's just not as, as tight as we have with brokers. You know, it's like every dime matters, every cent matters. But they're so like, it's, hey, it's possible to renegotiate. Absolutely, it's possible. And so that's like a big thing. I'm glad we mentioned it now. It's not all just gamble. Hey, like I committed now. It's all or nothing. No, like it can, you know, change and you can renegotiate. And a lot of times I think, I hope shippers are not going to take that as, 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 as kind of like, hey, like you're trying to screw me over here. No, I'm just telling you the market is changing. The way that we negotiated back when the market was, it was. Now the market is this, let's renegotiate. Of course, hopefully, very hopefully that changes while you are, your contract is expiring, right? right? So you have to be very careful how much you're committing right now. But what do you think um, the ratio of contracted lanes versus spot market <laughs> lanes uh, should be in the company? Is it should be 50-50 or something, or yeah. maybe should be more of the direct shipper lanes. That's also up to the company's profile. What type of drivers do you have? Do you have owner ops? Do you have company drivers? Where are they? What are their expectations? I mean, every single company has a different recruitment process, correct? They are offering something different. My opinion on it is that, and earlier you started the, the, the podcast with talking about, you know, going with DAT versus trying to get to shippers. I think going to DT is a little bit of a lazy process. Everybody can do it. There is no, you don't need much knowledge to it. You get a login, you click post and phone starts ringing or you start calling people, you book a truck. That's always going to be there. Spot is always going to be there. But maybe give this a chance. Give contract a chance. I think it's going to push your company forward. I think it's going to make you realize some of the things you need to work on. Where are you losing money? What are the areas that are actually good for your, for your drivers? What are the areas that are bad for your drivers? What are the areas where if a truck breaks down, it's really bad? And maybe once you eliminate those, you focus on where you want to find those direct shippers and direct lanes. Or with the broker, of course, you can get a contract with them. And then once you get in contract, you always need to have a little bit of a mix of spot because there are drivers that only want to drive spot. There's a lot of owners that want to drive spot. They're like, hey, like, I'll go where the money is. Sounds good. I'll send you all 48 states. Not o a problem. Probably owner. Yeah, you mentioned owner operators. Owner, right? owner operators, yeah. yeah. Like they might not want to drive um, a contract or, or round trips in the same area. They just don't. Right. And that's fine. That's up to you to figure that out. But I think that, and I have a, a very interesting story, if you don't mind me sharing. Oh, yeah. Stories are always um, good. I was actually speaking three, four years ago with, um, with one of the uh, owners of a pretty decent side company. I can't remember how many trucks they had, but a hundred plus. And uh, in Chicago, Serbian, I ran into them in a bar um, and they're like, oh, you're a broker, da, 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 da. And then the conversation goes, he pulls me aside, he's like, let me ask you something. How much do I need to pay to get on a load board with shippers? I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, well, that's how you get the freight, right? It's like DAT. You mean like the bribe? 
No, 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 no. He thought that there is a load board where brokers oh. go and shippers post loads and we call on loads and mm -hmm. win the load and then just sell it to a carrier. Okay, because I thought, you know, a different way of no, how no, much no, no, it no, costs. No, 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 Like, like, like <laughs> give me the information to like, so I can get on that board. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, do you really think that's how people go after shippers? Like, it's, it's, it's that easy. Like another load board. Another <laughs> load board, right. So yeah, of course, and that that's lazy thinking. You think that you can just do the business this way. And I think as, as good as these load boards are, the bad side is, you know, in Europe, right? Have you talked to anybody in trucking in Europe? In Europe? Yeah. Like who operate in Europe? Yeah, yeah like a trucking company in Europe, an uh, owner. Not, not owner operators here. I, I, like sometimes they talk. Not uh, no they one, talking to me they, because they're all trying yeah. to get in here. <laughs> yeah, no owner of a company? No. So most of the, from my understanding, most of the relationships there are direct. There is There's no, no load, load board. Correct. Yeah. So it forces you to build that sales team to like understand what you're marketing to, like to find those shippers that are fit for your trucks, for your drivers, et cetera, et cetera. Here it's a little bit lazy. You know, you just get your MC, you get on the Go board, on the and you're up and running. It's uh, like we've been talking pretty much to anybody about this uh, 2021. Yeah. 2022 that especially you don't have to know about about tracking anything mm -hmm. all, all you need is just your mc number and you can already make money just by having a truck out there somebody will call you and book your truck yeah. for a decent decent amount of money probably more than you're hoping yeah. for too <laughs> yeah i mean but and, now correct now it forces people yeah. it forces people to do things i'm not saying that of course the cost of doing business is much lower here because you don't have to hire you know the, the sales team you don't have to do all these different things branding marketing you just you know you just get on, on the board but let's maybe push back because i've also spoke to many company owners here that started by direct shipper and then they go on dat here and there when the truck breaks down they need to send the truck back where it needs to be and Right now, they're doing much better than others. I know that. Of course, the rates are down for them. The operating cost is up for them. They're not doing but it's this just good. Easier for them just by knowing that there is a load. Of course. For today, tomorrow, next week. Correct. Correct. And of course, I mean, come on, it's not only just the rate. Of course, we know brokers they run out of business. We know shippers they ran out of business. Because chances are if the shipper doesn't pay the broker, broker may not pay you. They should, but they may not, or it's gonna be delayed, right? Another thing, when you work with one or two shippers, you know exactly what's going on with them. You can go follow how is their stock doing. You can talk to the logistics manager. You can actually see things live in the, right. in the, in the, in the logistics uh, in the warehouse, right? If they are not getting freight, people are getting less and less, people are getting fired. Something's, something's going, going on. on. Yeah, exactly. Same with the trucking company. Correct. If you see that the, you know something is happening, yeah. Yeah, so less less trucks. Uh, yeah, no, not renewing the registration. Oh yeah, like what's happening right now. Yeah, registration we're just yeah. due now. Lots of companies didn't uh, renew. Somebody did, but not all of the trucks. So, so what do you do in that case when you do that? I guess when it happens, it's mean that you're done and mm -hmm. uh, you you either out of business or putting trucks on their other MC and just leasing yeah. them out. Yeah, I mean you have to kind of get creative with that, but. If you didn't have the money for registration, probably like ran out of money completely. Yeah, because uh, it's you, you. You won't just be like, oh, I got I got no money for registration. Yeah. It's mean that you've been struggling for a long time. Yeah, and especially like I'm, I'm assuming <clears throat> most companies pay their drivers every week. Yeah, if that check doesn't hit on the Friday, Monday, whatever the case oh, is. Oh yeah, that's the, there. There is a few signs of the company's problem if yeah. the check is not on time if it's like been every friday but now it's been delayed every time yeah. sometimes you might have a uh, problems with your fuel cart at the yeah. fuel pump and you like start experiencing some uh, disruptions right and you keep getting uh you're hearing from the trucking company oh yeah there's something with the cart you know like i will call the customer service yeah, yeah. and fix it yeah or something else. Uh, so yeah, those are signs of the something is wrong with the company. Yeah, but I think also um, these bad times really show a lot about the business relationships. So I know, um, not in our case, thank God, but I know a lot of companies that um, had a lot of pending, um, you know, invoices from shippers and shippers are come, hey, like we don't have money right now because what a lot of shippers are doing, the last thing they're going to pay for is transportation. transportation they have to yeah. pay for everything else, right? They have to pay, for, especially for transportation that already happened. Like you're not affecting their yeah. business, right? They can wait, but they can't not pay for 
like somebody that's selling them, let's say raw products, raw materials, labor for labor. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, and I think this is a time where let's say in your, if you're in a position to wait and honor that, I really hope that that, that shipper honors that long term and actually maybe right. uh, you know holds their rate for as much as they can, and especially if it's under contract, and they don't ask you to reprice. And that's another thing that I should mention too. Shippers also ask can ask you to reprice, just because you know you ask me like, what do you do if if market goes up in August and it skyrockets and we go after shippers and go, hey, we need more money. But if let's say the market is really good right now, and then in August it goes down same thing they can also exactly that's what they did <laughs> exactly but like i really doubt that many brokers and carriers would call up on the ship and like, hey i'm making a lot of money here lower my rates yeah but the ones that did those are the good relationships i think that this market also teaches you a lot you know and and, and shows people what kind of business and and then what kind of uh, relationships you're you're having and running Uh, what would you uh, what would you suggest to uh, people who are willing to either enter the mm -hmm. sales world of the transportation industry or uh, maybe some of our viewers are you know uh, in the logistics having companies owner operators you know different size yeah. uh, what are your uh, advices to them uh, yeah. entering this sales world great question great question uh, don't get into it I'm kidding no <laughs> <laughs> No, no, do it, do it, absolutely do it. I, I've, I've had, you know, um, I've had a lot of fun with it. Um, I got some gray hairs from it, but that's that's normal, you know. Um, be ready to be always. By the way, yes, you do. I do. Uh, I age of twenty seven, twenty nine, twenty nine. Yeah, you already yeah. have some. <laughs> exactly, that's logistics to you, right? So think twice, guys, think if you want to do it. No, absolutely no. Uh, I think you should you should definitely get in it. Um, and and uh, first thing, get good training, get good mentorship. Um, I think that one of the worst things that can happen to anybody that just got in that has, let's say, a very bad sales pitch or very, very bad, let's say, a uh, phone call or whatever the case is and wins a shipper just because they called him at the right time. Just ac that, accidentally, right? Like accidentally, yes. Happy then, accident, yeah. Exactly. Then you think you're doing something right, but you just got lucky. And then you keep doing the same thing. And then you're asking yourself two months after, why am I not getting any shippers? Like, I got this one by doing this. That means that I should get more. Well, no. So, yeah, absolutely go with a company that's going to provide you with great training, that's going to invest in you. Um, and also, you have to be ready to give yourself all. Like, you need to be ready to learn. Um, put your ego aside. Uh, kind of like, hey, like, come into it. It's like, I don't know anything. I want to learn everything. Also, go with a company that has a very transparent um, kind of like culture where you can ask anybody in the company, hey, like, what are you doing? I want to learn about you. I think it's very good also for salespeople to learn what other people in the company are doing. Like, it would be very silly for me not to talk to dispatch, understand the problems they're having, what are the drivers telling them, all these different things. Like, also, let's say accounting. Like, if I don't talk to them and we have a shipper that didn't pay us for 120 days and I'm pushing that shipper and growing them, that's a problem, right? right? Yeah, so you need to definitely spend a lot of time, you know, there is a lot of free lessons, like, you know, I hope that even this podcast... And you don't even have to probably uh, go specifically into the, like, transportation world of sales. It's probably sales in general first as a baseline, and then... Listen, listen, I have a, I have a different, a little bit of a different opinion, because now in the world of Instagram, in the world of YouTube... Usually the salesperson that everybody imagines is like the Wolf of Wall Street guy. It's like a super jacked up guy, car salesman guy that's like very energetic and, and, and aggressive and all these different things. And, and, and I applaud those guys. I think that's, that's, that's different. For me, I, I'm not that guy. And, and I realize that there is a lot of people that are completely not that person and portraying that person. Because usually, we just, just talk about, usually that's a guy, right? There is a lot of great woman salespeople that I've met. I had managers that were really, really good and taught me a lot of things. So I believe that sales is probably 95% grind. And what I mean by grind is like doing the research, understanding who you're going after, understanding what your company is, what is the service you're providing, how you, what are you better at than others? Once you do all that, Then you can work on those little like kind of like objection handlings and how to approach and how to look and how to talk, all these different things. But if you don't get the fundamentals right and work really, really hard preparing for the sales call or sales pitch, 
you're not going to get far. Like you can look however you want, you can dress however you want, you don't have to be jacked, you don't have to be tall, you don't have to be pretty. If you do your job and you're really invested in it, you should be very successful. Um, again, not for anybody to get offended. I think that those types of and personality of salespeople are really good and they're like more naturally acclaimed to be good at sales. But I think that anybody can get into it. You just have to really, really work on yourself and understand what you're doing and the company you're representing or yourself, whatever the case is. All right, guys, you know? there's another thing where you have to make notes if you're trying to enter the world of sales in the trucking. <clears throat> and um, hopefully, uh, not some, but a lot of shippers might be watching this podcast. Yes. <laughs> uh, so I'll give you a chance to, you know, introduce you, uh, my buck, yeah. and uh, just so they, if they still don't know, uh, you can uh, promote sure, your sales sure, pitch sure. here. I will learn, yeah. and all of the people who is watching as well. You are putting me on the spot here, but that's okay. <laughs> that's perfectly fine. Uh, I'm not going to give a, a regular sales pitch, but I'll tell you essentially what separates us. Um, number one, as I talked about it, we, we have a lot of trucks. Um, we are um, mostly, I would say, about 100% at this point, only drive-in focused, and we have a lot of trailers. Second thing is we invested a lot in our technology. What I mean by that is, number one, we have very transparent tracking. We love our partners, who I'm not going to promote now, but we love working with them. And whatever we see, we let our customers see. So for example, the location of the truck, the location of the trailer, very important to differentiate the two because once you drop a trailer, you don't see where it is unless you have another physical tracking device on it. We have it. Another thing we have is every single truck has a video dash cam recording camera. This camera is recording live and it stores everything. If a shipper wants to see what went on with the load, what time did it arrive, and it's also integrated with the GPS so they can see what's being recorded, what's the video showing, and where it was. So, for example, when did the driver get there? Actually, let's see it. Bam. You can see the video, what it happened. And another important thing that our partners that we use for technology to record this, they are not, we can't like mess with this data. Like that's, that's because this is not your server. Exactly. Right? Like we can't adjust anything. Whatever we see, a shipper sees, they see it. And these companies we work with have really good reputation. So they would never even, you know, risk something like that for us. Another thing we have, as I said, we have a pretty big back, back office. We employ a lot of people in different parts of the world too. So we are 24 seven. We have invested a lot of money and training into these people and we also have our values like in Maybach nobody is above these values you know how you talk to drivers you know how you talk to brokers you know how to talk to dispatch you know how to talk to your colleagues and I think that's very important because that shows also if when things get tough when things are good how you talk to your customers and how you provide that service and and, and the final thing I'll say is that um, you know we 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 are definitely now transitioning we're still transitioning between being on spot and going to to contract so we want to work with you so you might get might as well give us a chance and th that's a good thing you know when i go to this conference i talk to a lot of brokers and we have really good reputation people are like oh we, i need more of your trucks i need more of your trucks that's not maybe the the sales pitch you're looking for but essentially oh, it was you know, great I'm, um, I'm pretty sure everybody who is watching from the customer side yeah. lined up uh, to send you an email or call. Uh, information will be in the description yeah. to this video. I'm going to leave your email, yeah, uh, phone number that you will give me sure. for this purpose. Sure. And uh, finally, uh, tell me, what do you enjoy the most uh, while working in this world of uh, transportation, yeah. logistics, sales uh, in general? Well, two things. Number one, uh, the money. Obviously, we are here to, to you know, uh, support our Sarah's families, whatever the case is. Or if you're young and looking to party, you can enjoy the lifestyle, right? Um, but the second thing for me, and, and I truly mean this, I know it sounds cliche, is just enjoying how chaotic it is. And what I mean by that is just like there is always new products, new technologies, new updates, the market going up, down, left, right, new trucks, all these different things that are changing. I think it's pretty cool when you learn about something, you're like, ah, I can do that. I can invest in that. I can bring that onto my company. I can learn about that and help my business or help myself. I mean, it can be easy as the, the, the example I gave you about the email tracker. Like that was a game changer for me. 
or now investing like oh we have real time tracking bam like that's another thing or all these new load boards and softwares and all these new technology that's coming out there so for me it's kind of like a mix of new technology and new updates that are happening because they always keep you up on your feet you're always learning new things because for me if you're not learning and growing in your career you're kind of wasting your time you know like it gets pretty boring just uh yeah money is good but at the end of the day if you're doing the same thing every single day at some point i i, I hope you're gonna get bored maybe not i am you know um what about you i want to ask you what, what do i enjoy yeah what do you enjoy the most you know i've been in this uh probably since the very beginning of my um presence in the United States. Mm -hmm. A few years I spent just doing different things and then uh, I found myself in trucking. Uh, this is something that uh, I do a long time and I found myself uh, enjoying just doing this because I talk to a lot of people, uh, most of them it's the drivers. I've been, to, I've been through all the departments in the trucking company that exist, besides maybe a mechanical part, you know, but still I was changing uh, some light bulbs on the truck <laughs> <laughs> because uh, being a driver, then owner operator, then uh, dispensing my own truck and then growing. This is like a, my, uh, my baby, right? Mm -hmm. Because I know where I've been and uh, looking back right now, I think we went uh, far. It's been a great journey and I'm enjoying doing this just because what it gave me, uh, not just uh, the trucking industry in general, but I would say United States, because mm -hmm. both of us being an immigrants, uh, I'm really grateful for what this country gave me, and uh, I'm grateful to be here. And the transportation industry taught me a lot, uh, introduced me to a lot of people. Uh, now it's you. Uh, yeah. I'm enjoying talking to you. It's not the first time we we're talking, yeah. and uh, I'm grateful grateful for that. Uh, to the trucking industry. Otherwise, I don't know if I will meet you. Yeah, probably not. I mean, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> yeah, and, and and absolutely. And also, I, I want to say, um, don't be so humble. I think you also did give a lot back to the country. When when you think about it, you have employed a lot of people, you have this real estate, you grew business, you, you're, you're creating economy. So, and I think more people like you uh, are, are great for this country because, again, uh, uh, what I said earlier, I think we have a bad reputation for um, no reason. Uh, I mean, there are reasons, but I think we, we don't get the credit we deserve here. There is a lot of great people in this industry, both shippers, brokers, carriers, drivers, yeah. you name it. In each niche. There in is, each yeah. niche, yeah. And, and and just before we finish, I also want to mention that thing. This is a question I got a lot because a lot of people that um, are immigrants, they ask me like, I don't think that sales is the best thing because as soon as they hear my accent, as soon as they hear they're, they're not That's gonna, very important. Yeah. It is very important, but I'll tell you, you can use it to your advantage. Like maybe look who you're talking to. Maybe find somebody with a funky last name in that uh, at the company. They might want to talk to you. Guys, write it down. Let right? me let me write this down. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever <laughs> I see the funky last name, I'm calling the guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Funky yeah. in like American yeah, standards. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, it's I'm, not I'm getting the joke. Joe yeah. Schmo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not Joe Schmo. It's the opposite of Joe Schmo. Uh, it's just that I think that um, yeah, just shoot him an email. And be like, hey, like this is who I'm at. Can you connect me to that person? You work with them. They like you probably, you know, since you're in the company. So just find your way to use what you are to your advantage. Is it going to work every time? Absolutely not. But give yourself a best chance. Again, that's sales. Give yourself a best chance. That's trucking. I mean, this is everything. Just you got to give yourself the best chance to succeed in this business. If you do, great. If you don't, maybe you did something wrong. Well, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, we can probably talk about immigration for i mean not the immigration <laughs> but immigrants in the trucking yeah. it will take us probably another hour at least yes uh let's save it for the next time, next time uh, yeah. i think it's more than enough for today yeah. information to process uh to everybody who is still watching this by the way guys thank you who is still here at the end of this uh almost almost two hours uh podcast yeah. i'm pretty sure you will find something that will benefit you personally in this 
Uh, I did uh, a lot of things. Every time I talk to Nicola, I find something useful for yeah. myself and how I do business. And thank you for that. Yeah. And thank you. Yeah. Thank you for the invitation. Um, you know, as you said earlier, I was kind of nervous about being a first podcast, but you it's did not great. that bad. It's you not did that great. bad. Once you get going and I love yeah. talking. So uh, you didn't look like it's your, your first time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that. But it was good. And and thank you for it, for, for having me here. And I hope everybody enjoyed and I wish you all the best. Now we're neighbors. We're going to spend more time here. Yes. Uh, so yeah, thank you. All right, guys. Uh, thank you so much again for watching. Uh, whoever's watched till the end again, a uh, special thank you. If anybody got any questions, I'm pretty sure Nicola will be looking out for the comments uh, here under this video. So please uh, ask your question, comment. If you're not agree, it's completely fine too. Yeah. You know, we like to hear different opinions. And uh, if you are not happy with uh, me or Nicola, you can also comment down below. Yep. Uh, also, do not forget, please, to like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet, because uh, this is this is my new channel. And with the views that I get, I still see that people are forgetting to subscribe because there is much more views than uh, subscribers. It will help me personally a lot. It doesn't cost you anything. So hit that subscribe button, like the video, comment, share it with your friends and family or whoever you think it will be beneficial to. And uh, thank you so much again, and we'll see you in the next podcast with me, Dennis Peniff. Bye-bye.